we live in a society where people tend to take things for granted. It's one of the drawbacks of having a lot of creature comforts and having so many of them. to the point where they seem normal, and we don't notice them anymore. And this taking things for granted tends to grow into a sense of entitlement. Not only do we have good things, but we feel that we should have good things. We get upset when we don't. And so we also begin to see people realizing the problem here and recommending that we have gratitude for the things we have. It's not just gratitude for the things, it becomes gratitude to the things. You're grateful to your house for sheltering you, you're grateful to your bed for supporting you, giving you comfort. You see many articles written on the topic, and I've seen people heard people talking about this many, many times. That we should be grateful to the things that provide us with comfort. That's not the Buddha's take. Gratitude, he says, is not to things, it's to people, to beings who've made choices. The Pali word for gratitude, katanyu, means literally you know what was done. Katawedi having a strong sense of wanting to respond for the good that's been done to you. And this is an entirely different dynamic. Instead of being grateful to the bed, you're grateful to the person who built the bed and who did a good job of building it, or the person who bought it for you to use. Or here at the monastery, you're grateful to all the people who've given the many things that we have here that make it possible for us to practice beginning with the land, and then the buildings, and then all the things in the buildings. These are all provided through someone's skillful intention, someone's compassionate motives, someone's generosity. And the reason this is an important distinction, that you're grateful to the people for the things rather than being grateful to the things themselves, is if you feel gratitude to your bed, it's hard not to get attached to your bed and to think that the goodness lies in the thing. Whereas if you're grateful to people, you realize that the goodness lies in the action, the goodness lies in the intention. That helps you to reflect. One, it's our society is held together not by good things, but by good intentions. And we see this in our country right now. We've got plenty of good things, but more and more there's a lack of good intentions. No one appreciates what other people have done. They take it for granted. It makes it hard for people to do good things. You feel underappreciated, you feel that nobody cares. And you wonder, why should I be doing good things for other people when they don't appreciate it, when they don't have gratitude? This is how lack of gratitude causes society to unravel. Real civilization doesn't lie in having good things, it, has, it lies in having good intentions for one another. And John Fuhrman tells the story of a John Munn. When he's living out in the forest, he'd need a spittoon, and so he'd get a coconut shell, and he'd make it into his spittoon. And someone once complained to him that this was a lowly thing, and they wanted to provide him with something better. They wanted to get a nice ceramic spittoon for him. And he said, well, wait a minute, which is higher and which is lower here? The coconut shell comes from high up on the tree. The ceramic comes from dirt. So 
especially on the idea of high or low or good or bad things. It's largely a matter of convention. And it's good to have your conventions turned upside down every now and then so you re realize that they are conventions. Then so you can begin to realize, okay, what actually is the distinction be between good and not good? And it lies in the intention. The intention to do what is skillful, the intention to be compassionate, the, the intention to help one another. Those are the good things that keep society functioning. And it goes further when you think about the goodness that has gone into, say, your bed or into your hut. It spurs you to action. Because after all, the goodness lies in the action. You realize that somebody had to put forth an effort either to do a good job in making the hut or to provide the resources to make the hut. If someone bought it specifically for you, okay, you have to be grateful for their intention to help you. Then you ask yourself, what am I doing with their good intentions? Am I just wallowing in the comfort, or am I actually trying to create some goodness of my own? The Buddha said this is one of the motivations for actually becoming an arahant, is so that all the good things that people have done for you will bear them great fruit. The more pure your mind, the greater the merit that they gain from their donation, from their generosity. So reflecting on where the goodness really lies, i.e. in the action, helps spur you onto good actions. This is why the Buddha said that gratitude is a sign of a good person. As you see the good that other people have done, and you have a strong appreciation for how difficult it is to do good. But you also have a strong sense of what's to be treasured in people's doing good. A person like that is more likely to do good him or herself. So in this way, gratitude, instead of getting you attached to objects, spurs you on to do more good things. But then you think a little bit further that these good things we use had to come through suffering. And some of the people or some of the people or beings involved in this process did so willingly, and others were not so willing. The animals who become our food. Or the workers who work in less than ideal conditions to make the things. There is suffering involved in all of our material possessions one form or another. So this spurs you even further. Can you get the mind to a point where it doesn't have to come back and use material things again, again and again and again? The simple fact of our being born means that we come in with this huge gaping hole, our need for food, clothing, shelter, and medicine. That means that our lives depend on the suffering, not only of ourselves, but also of other beings. So this contemplation spurs you even further to, to try to find a way out. What is the escape from this burdensome process? How can we find a happiness that doesn't depend on other people's suffering, other beings' suffering? So when you think of the goodness around you, it's not the goodness in the things. It's the goodness in the actions. You appreciate the things you have. You take good care of them. 
But the gratitude is for the people and the beings who made those things, bought those things, provided those things for you to use. And your way of repaying them is to practice, to do good yourself, and being generous, and being virtuous, and meditating, particularly in meditating. Because on the one hand, as I said, the, the more pure your mind, the more merit goes to the people who provided the things that made it possible for you to practice. When your mind reaches ultimate purity, then you don't have to come back and be a burden for anyone anymore. So try to keep this distinction between appreciation and gratitude in mind. Both of them help us get past our tendency to take things for granted and to overcome our childish sense of entitlement. But it's important that you are clear on where they're different. Appreciation is for the things, but gratitude is for the actions. Because that focuses you on your actions and what you're going to do in response. That's how gratitude keeps you focused on the practice.